Hi everyone, this is Brittany and Abby from Big Brothers Big Sisters. Today we'll be discussing our site-based programs. We'll be talking with Lindsay Tidrick, school counselor at Strasburg Schools. Later we'll be talking with two of our site-based Big Brothers. First, we'd like to thank Republic State Mortgage. At Republic State Mortgage, they build relationships one home at a time. They lend money so you can invest in the real estate market. They're located at 123 4th Street Southwest in New Philadelphia. They specialize in FHA, USDA, VA, and conventional loans, and they're your local lending experts. They love face-to-face applications, but with the current conditions, they also give their borrowers the option to apply online. You can check them out at republicstatemortgage.com for all of your purchase and refinance needs. Their NMLS number is 62411. We'd also like to thank Get Level Podcast Network for helping us kick off our March Madness campaign. During the month of July, we have the goal of making 10 matches and ending the wait for children on our waiting list. This campaign is more focused on our community-based program, but we still want to provide information about our site-based program so that everyone is aware of both of the programs that we offer. Today, we're here with Lindsay, school counselor from Strasburg. Thank you for talking with us today. Oh, you're so welcome. Our site-based programs are supervised programs that take place at a specific school or site. These programs take place on the same same day and time each week and are facilitated October through April. Our staff has worked with Lindsay for many years and this partnership has made the program at Strasburg Schools very successful. Lindsay helps us identify students, facilitate schedules, and communicates with parents to ensure the success of the program. Lindsay, why have you become such a big supporter of Big Brothers Big Sisters? I just think you guys do such a great job with pairing the kids and working together and it gives our littles on the elementary side a really great opportunity to work with our high school kids and then it gives the high school kids an opportunity to get to know some of our younger students as well. And I also believe that you guys facilitate it so well with the games and working together and you always have leading topics for the kids, which is really great because sometimes those high school students aren't quite sure what to do with the little kids, but by the end of the year and in April, you can tell that they're all best friends. Well, thank you for saying that. Oh, you're welcome. How do you identify students to be littles and how do you select students who will be good mentors to those younger students? So the littles, I send out a letter to all the parents at the end of the year and then one again at the beginning of the year, just outlining the program, the goals, your mission statement, why it's a good idea to have a mentor and have somebody for their littles to look up to. So then the teachers can refer them or the parents just fill out the form and get it back to me. Then for the high school side, I work with mostly our CCP students who don't have class on Fridays. So a lot of them can come back, spend some time in the building with our elementary students. But this year, we actually had a lot of sophomores who were interested. And so we got to pull some of the 10th graders in and gave them a great um, opportunity to start building their relationships. And hopefully they can work with them for the next three to two years as they move on in school. Um, During the program, the Big Brothers Big Sisters staff present their own curriculum with activities that focus on the 40 developmental assets. We also encourage matches to work on schoolwork. Um, At the end of the sessions, bigs and littles have time to choose their own activities, and this encourages relationship development between them. What is the general response from the kids after their Big Brothers Big Sisters session? Um, Do you feel that they enjoy them? Oh my gosh, they love them. And then they look forward to them so, so much on Fridays. Like when we have snow days or if somebody's sick, they're always like, where are they? And they'll come to me and they'll find me in the lunchroom and they'll be like, Johnny didn't come get me today. And I'm like, Johnny's out sick. Like you'll see him next week. But the great thing about Strasburg is that because we're all in one building, they can see him more than just on Fridays. They can see him at lunch. They see each other in the hallway. They high five, they fist bump, they hug. So, I mean, Strasburg's really lucky that we have the setup that we do, that we can see everybody all the time. So you feel that they develop their relationships through not only the school-based program, but with all the grades being in one, one school as well. Yes. Yeah. And relationship building right now is such a big deal. Build on those continuing throughout the school year, even if it does have to be maybe remotely through a video, Zoom conference chat like this, but we'll see what we can do. Definitely. And we will do what uh, we can on our side to ensure that those matches get to meet this year. 
Um, so sometimes the sessions take place during a child's lunch or recess. Um, have you seen that students are willing to sacrifice their time with friends to see their bigs? Yeah, especially our littles. They really do look forward to it. Um, it's kind of cool, though, too. Like, I get to go see the high school kids. I get to go hang out with the basketball player. I get to go see the cheerleader. So they do look forward to it. And I think that's what's really helped to build our program at Strasburg is that the kids like it so much. So they talk to their friends about it and then they all want to do it. Um, sometimes it gets messy with the high school schedules to make it all work, but it always it always seems to work out in the end. We've never had too much of an issue. So I think we've been pretty lucky on that end. What benefits or outcomes have you seen in the students who participate in the program? I think for sure it's their social. Like they just, it's the shy ones that come out of there and they are just, they're more talkative. They're more willing to raise their hand in class. And, you know, they're not huge steps, but they're baby steps. And if we can start those processes and, you know, K through five, working on social skills, that's huge, I think. And how do you have a conversation? And how do you ask questions? And how do you work together? So those are the big skills that I think come out of this. Plus, it's just, it's great for kids to have conversations face to face, because so much of it is done digitally now, too. Um, so each school is different in how the site-based programs look. So can you describe what a general program session looks like at Strasburg? So because we're the K-12 building, um, we set it up on Fridays somewhere between like 10 and 1, which is like the recess lunchtime for the elementary students. So then the high school kids, if, they're, if they don't have Kent, they come back or they, they stay at the school. And I just match them up based on time. And I'm lucky to know all the kids in the district pretty well. So I can I know who would do well together. Sometimes I meet with the elementary principal and we go to the list and talk about, you know, so-and-so would work better with Sammy and Sammy might not work so well with Linda. And we go through all that. So we try to keep it really personalized too, so that they get the most out of it. And then they meet for about 30 minutes every Friday. And by the end of it, the kids really enjoy it and they look forward to it. And I think that's another reason why this program has been so successful as well is just the the help of you and the other school staff in kind of creating those relationships and seeing who would work best together. Um, kind of everyone works together to do that. So I think that's a great, great partnership at that school. Thank you guys so much. Um, so you talked a little bit about the outcomes you see and the littles that participate in the program. Um, do you feel that the program has a positive impact on the bigs as well? Oh, for sure. Because I don't think our high school kids know how much of a positive influence they can be and how much the kids really respond to them. And that this this pushes them to be a better role model and for them to think, you know, what am I doing that's reflecting back on the school or what is my little going to think? So I, d I think it helps kids learn how to just see themselves in a different light. And I also think it just gives the kids that opportunity to mentor because not many kids get that opportunity. And I always tell my high school kids, I'm like, listen, this looks good on applications, looks good on scholarship stuff. And I think the high school kids would say they've grown a lot more than what they thought they might doing this process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being a mentor is a big deal for them. So they take it pretty seriously. Okay. Um, how has COVID-19 affected your students? Well, from what I can see, my high school kids really did struggle, the juniors and the seniors, with missing out. And, you know, there was so much we couldn't do. We couldn't do prom. We really we did the best we could at graduation. And I think it is an ongoing traumatic experience for these kids and that we just have to be gentle with them. I read a quote online the other day that was a um, reminder. This, this year is not to be caught up. This year is to just keep our kids in a healthy, safe mind frame. And and so I think that's what we can all take from this is, you know, there was a trauma, there was grief through this whole process. You know, there's a lot of kids who don't want to go home for the summer. School's their safe place. So that's what COVID-19, I think, is going to be for a lot of my elementary kids. And then it's our job and it's the big jobs to keep them in a good place throughout the school year. And we didn't get to finish our site-based program um, at the end of the school year because of the school closures. Um, so we were all disappointed about not being able to see our bigs and not being able to see the littles at the school. Um, do you feel that those kids can benefit from the program continuing this upcoming fall? I think they can. I think we're going to have to do a lot of work with how can we make it safe social distance wise. Um, 
I would love to have you guys in the building with masks on, you know, and sitting across, you know, a lunch table from the kids so that we have that interaction. That's so important to the kids right now. Cause I think that's what they're missing out on too, is the play aspect of school play. Is so, so important. So, you know, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of creativity, a lot of flexibility and brainstorming, but I think we can get there. Yeah. And we would love to be in the schools as well. Um, I know that we've been working on a programming plan for the fall. Um, just coming up with safety precautions, um, being able to offer options such as virtual mentoring, um, just making sure that those littles can meet with their bigs and have that, that positive influence throughout the school year. Yeah, I think, I think we can do it. It's just, it's going to take teamwork. Definitely. For sure. Um, what would you say to parents who may be interested in enrolling their child in the program? That the biggest thing is um, the parents are like, but they already have a big sister. I'm like, whoa, whoa, this is different. It's not the same as having a big brother at home or a big sister at home. And I just said, give it a chance. It's a way for them to build their social skills, to get to know, know somebody outside of their family. And it just gives them another fun, positive thing to look forward to, which, you know, there's never too many of those, I guess. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you, you know, want to share about Big Brothers, Big Sisters or about the program within your school? I just really encourage parents to give it a try. Um, encourage your kids to be a big, encourage your kids to be a little and let, you know, let the program speak for itself because I think there's so much good that comes from it. And it is a time commitment, but it's during the school day. It's not after school. It's not before school. It's in the middle of the day and only good things are going to come from it. Well, thank you very much for talking with us. Uh, we love working oh, with yeah, you absolutely. and you're an asset to our program. So we appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We're here with two of our school-based bigs. Can you each introduce yourselves and tell us how long you've been part of the program? My name is uh, Matt Campbell. I'm a superintendent at Carroll County Board of Developmental Disabilities. And I actually was in the program for Community Base back in January of 2005. Uh, my little um, aged out. And then I went into the uh, site base at the school, Carrollton Schools, um, about five years ago. My name is Jerry Schultz. I'm a school-based uh, mentor there. And I've uh, been there for three years. Three different littles, so uh, I had kind of a difference between, I think the youngest one was like seven, and the oldest one was probably about 12 or 13, so I found it really interesting. Okay. Um, so why do you each take the time out of your day to come to the school and mentor each week? Oh, uh, yeah. I re I'm retired, so I have time, but... Believe it or not, when you're retired, you're more busy than when I worked because I've always there's always something to do. But uh, it was uh, nice at lunchtime to go over there and spend the time with the students and talk to them. Okay. Yeah, and similar, except for I'm not retired. I wish I was, but um, I just take time out my lunch and go over. And you know, relationships are key, and you know, I believe in giving back to the community. And the superintendent before me got me into Rotary, and then. Uh, one of my friends who's a superintendent was in Rotary at that time. He was a business manager for the board. And uh, he's like, hey, you want to volunteer for Big Brothers, Big Sisters? And it's all been downhill or uphill <laughs> since then, whatever you want to look at it. <laughs> uphill, definitely. Yes. <laughs> there are many misconceptions about who can be a big. A lot of people feel that they're too old or too busy. Um, Jerry, you're retired, like you said. And Matt, you said you're the superintendent of the Carroll County Board of Developmental Disabilities. What would you each say to people who might believe those misconceptions? Oh, I guess I get to go. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, relationships are, are important. And uh, it, it's amazing how much benefit you actually get out of this. You know, you think you're going in to help other people, but it also, you know, benefits you. Um, you create connections not only with the little, but with the wonderful staff at Big Brothers Big Sisters, you know, school staff. Um, so it's all about being part of the community and, uh, and it does take a community to raise a kid. And unfortunately, some of the kids, you know, don't have all the support they need. So it's a nice function to do that. And as far as, uh, being too old or not having time, uh, it's probably harder for someone that works to, uh, find time at lunch. You can get off and go to lunch, but I'm off. So I just take time. As far as being too old, I kind of consider myself as more of a big grandpa than a big brother. <laughs> but uh, 
I could still relate to the kids, and it, I enjoy doing it. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so, Matt, you've been matched with the same little for the past five years, uh, and you recently won an award for being the longest school-based match. Uh, so what is the relationship like between you and your little brother? Alex and I get along well. Um, Alex can be a little hyper and, you know, have some social skills issues that, you know, I try to help him out with. But, you know, it's, it's neat to see how he's been growing this whole process. And, and uh, we have a good relationship and he always looks forward to seeing me and same here. So, okay. Um, he's in high school now. Yes. Um, so that's a little bit of a different relationship having a little who's in high school. Um, some people may feel that older littles may not want to be involved in the program. Do you ever feel that your little would rather be doing something else? Absolutely not. Um, you know, he's made that clear and I've always asked him, you know, um, and we do things that, you know, he likes to do during that time together. So, um, he's a really neat kid. He does very well in school and, uh, he has some cool friends there as well. I think he's the one little that comes to the program without having to be reminded. And as soon as he gets there, he says, where's Matt? Yep. <laughs> so he very much <laughs> looks forward to it. Jerry, you've been matched with a different little each year that you've been involved at the site-based program. Um, what has that experience been like you? And why do you choose to continue to mentor, even though it's been a different student each year? Well, I was hoping to get the same student. Uh, one year I did, but then he moved away. So I had to pick up another one. But uh, again, they all have different personalities. One, one little boy was very quiet, and the next one talked so much he couldn't get a word in edgewise. So <laughs> it was very interesting, and and I help them in in their subjects in the classroom. The the one, the oldest one, had a little problems with math, and I enjoy math, so we got along well, and I think we got a lot accomplished. So do you feel like you've had something to offer to each of those children, even though they've been different ages and different personalities? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. So I have to feel out for the first couple sessions mm -hmm. and see what, what they like and what I can relate to, okay. what I try to do. Um, we get a higher number of females who want to mentor, um, but we still have many male littles in the program. Uh, so we need bigs like these guys who are willing to be big brothers to the boys in our program. Um, what would you say to men who may be apprehensive about getting involved as a mentor? I say step up. I mean... Um, as you can see in society, one of the problems we have is good male role models. And, uh, you know, you just need to, sometimes you got to step out your comfort zone and, and try it out. And, and again, I think you'll be surprised at how much, how much, how rewarding it is. And, you know, you get just as much out of it as what the little does in my opinion. So. Yeah, that's true. And, and, uh, also I, sh I try to step up in town and help out where I can. I've only lived there 10 years and uh, try to help everybody. And I, I'm the treasurer for the American Legion. I also volunteer for the Red Cross. And this was just another thing to help keep me busy and occupied. And besides doing crossword puzzles. So. <laughs> um, so during our program, we typically bring an activity for the matches to work on. Um, but you definitely have some downtime to do some other things with your little. What are some of the conversations that you typically have with them? Well. Like I say, I have three different ones, so they, they were interested in different things. Uh, the one, he liked to uh, ride his bicycle a lot, and uh, so we talk what he did for the weekend. Of course, I, I'm retired from the Air Force, so I was a mechanic, so I, he, they liked talking about the airplanes and learning about the military somewhat. All of them. Yeah, my little's a teenager, so, you know, I kind of, do some prompting like, you know, what do you think about getting a job and what kind of job would you like? Um, you know, you think about driving, you know, and I know he really likes playing video games. So we talk a lot about video games and he really likes puzzles and things of that nature. So talk about what his likes are, but also try to prompt him to thinking about the future and, and making some of those important decisions. Um, one thing we've really loved to see is when our bigs uh, bring stuff from what they've been doing to share with their littles. Um, and one thing this year um, was, Jerry, you went to a presentation and came back to tell your little about it. Um, and Brittany and I remember that from the program because we thought it was really cool. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about what the presentation was about and why you shared pictures and information with your little? Oh, it was awesome. It was uh, over in the college. Uh, Katie Coleman, one of the astronauts, talked about being in space and brought pictures about floating around and 
she brought some handouts of pictures, and I brought a couple of them to my little and talked to them about it. Uh, it's important for kids to see that they can do stuff like that, you know, again, with the, what do they need, science, technology, engineering, and math. You know, if they if they study up on those subjects, they, they have the opportunity to, to do that if they want to. Or they could be a janitor, or they could fix cars, or whatever they want. You know, so I try to stress that, and yeah, he really enjoyed that, and and I was glad I could bring that to him. Yeah, he was very excited to see yeah. to see pictures and hear about that. That was awesome. Floating around in space, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, why did you both choose to be bigs in the site based program instead of the community based program? Well, I'm very busy with my job, um, and I was also you know Rotary president again. Um, so site based was a little bit easier for me in my time. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I decided to be site based. Well, I'll like say it just fits in for me. I can come over there pretty much any time, as long as it's not too early in the morning, because yeah. I like to read the paper. Yeah. <laughs> and you live right by the school, so it's convenient yeah, for you to there. just pop over and right. Okay. Um, if you're looking to become involved and aren't sure if the community-based program is the best fit for you, you can be a big in one of the 13 site-based programs that we offer. We have programs at Strasburg Elementary, Strasburg Middle School, Claymont Intermediate, Dover East, Dover South, Dover Avenue, New Philadelphia West, New Philadelphia East, Tuskegee Valley Middle School, Newcomerstown West Elementary, Bell Heron Middle School, and Brown Local Elementary and Middle School. Um, Jerry and Matt, what would you both say to encourage individuals to become bigs? Again, it's, I think it's uh, rewarding and if, if you want to help out your community and kind of give back. And I, I probably appeal to the senior citizens because it seems like we can get away more easy. And we have a lot of life experience to share with the little kids uh, and even the big kids if they're older. I only had one that was older, but you know, I helped him do math and stuff. So uh, I think anyone that would want to do this could, could – uh, come in and participate and kids would, would help out the kids. Okay. There's a lot of families in need out there. Um, and when I first started, you know, the individual, the little that I had lost his father, you know, it was kind of a, a sad situation and wasn't doing well. Uh, I was getting in trouble uh, in school and in, in the community. And, and by us forming a relationship, uh, that turned around. Uh, he did well in school. He graduated from school. He actually went to college um, graduate, graduated in engineering. I'm very proud of him. Now he has a job in chemical engineering, oh, wow. making awesome. quite a bit of money and bought himself a new, uh, Dodge Challenger, I think it was. Um, and he, you know, he called me I don't know, a couple months ago and, you know, was all excited about that. So, um, you know, to me, that's one of the, uh, nice things about this is the success, yeah, sorry, but success stories, you know, and that you can be, you know, part of that. So, and that's really cool that you still stay connected with that little and that he's proud to share those achievements with you even now that he's older. Um, we talk a lot about the outcomes of our littles from being in the programs, um, but also just the benefits that the bigs get out of it. Um, what are some things that you two have gotten out of being a big in the program? Again, like I said, it, uh, I like going into the community and helping out and, and, and to meet the, the youngsters and middle age, well, middle school kids. Uh, I, I don't have much contact with them in my life, and it, it just helps the generation gap uh, maybe get a little closer there. So, okay. You know, again, it comes back to the relationships, you know, forming key uh, relationships, and it, it makes you feel good um, just, you know, staying connected with people and, and uh, helping them out. Um, and it definitely makes you feel good, just kind of like why I'm in the line of work I'm in now. You know, the individuals that I serve at the County Board of DD and same way with in this program, they really appreciate the help and they, and they you know, they really are happy to see and it's genuine. You know, it's not. Um, so, yeah, when you get that kind of reward, why wouldn't you want to do it? And I hope you both realize the, the impact that you've each had on your littles, you know, whether it's been the same little for five years or several different littles. I hope that you both know how much you've affected you know, children in your community, have you, how you've affected their, their lives in a positive way. Sometimes I see them in town and they'll wave to me. You know, I've <laughs> seen a couple of them. I, re I just seen uh, one of them just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. That's down awesome. in Strasburg. And he says, I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> 
and they always get all excited to see yeah, their yeah. picks. Um, is there anything else either of you would like to add about being in the program? No, just if, if it's something that you'd like to do, I ask that people would step up because we need the men. We don't have, we don't have that many men. A, a lot of, we have uh, matched the, the girls, but the boys, you know, and, you know, the young boys nowadays, I think need some guidance and some of them don't have it at home. So if you could help, Definitely. step up. I would say if you can be a friend of someone, then you can be a mentor. And uh, so just step up, you know, get out of your comfort zone, try it. And, you know, you're not held captive. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. If it doesn't work out with one individual, you can always, you know, try someone else. There's plenty of kids that need a mentor. Um, so just step out of your comfort zone and, and try it out. Well, it was great talking with both of you. Um, thank you for continuing to support our program by mentoring the children in your community. If you're interested in becoming a mentor or sponsoring one of our matches, you can call us at 330-339-6916. You can also get more information from our website, bigs4kids.com, or our Facebook page, Big Brothers Big Sisters of East Central Ohio. Thank you both. Thank you. Okay.